Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about producing strawberries profitably and sustainably in warm and hot climates. So berries like strawberries are typically grown in cool or mild climates, in open fields or in low cost tunnels, or off season in high tech glass houses. But in sunny hot climates, cooling is more important than heating. When producing in tunnels, crops are typically destroyed when the days get longer and outside conditions become hot and dry. But a conventional greenhouse in a sunny hot climate requires a pad and fan cooling system, which uses huge amounts of water and electricity. A Cravo retractable cooling house is specifically designed to exploit the ideal conditions outdoors and protect crops only when beneficial, using 95% less water and electricity than pad and fan cooled greenhouses. We have been producing strawberries in a sunny hot climate for five years at our Global Innovation and Demonstration Center in Mexico. This center is located at Irapuato, Mexico at 1,720 meters above sea level and latitude 20 north which is similar to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia or Indoor India. Now, when we look at the, the climate data, in central Mexico, you can see that they get a heavy rain period in the summer, but the big challenge is once you start reaching February, March, the temperatures are getting very high. And because we're at 1,700 meters, we get high radiation, high temperatures and low humidity. And if we take hail in Saudi Arabia as an example, we can see that they've got that same rising temperature going into the summer. And so this is the part of the problem right here. The temperatures aren't bad at night for a strawberry. The rain, minimal rain, but it occurs closer to the end of the year. So when we analyze the data for hail, we can see that if we look at nighttime and daytime temps, for three months or 90 days, the temperature goes below nine degrees Celsius, in which case you'd want to close the roof at night to create a greenhouse environment. At night, 155 days, the temperature is optimal at night because it's above nine degrees, and 120 days, it's above 20. But in the daytime, we don't have any days with temperatures below nine. And 100% of the days, we have some hours between 9 and 28 Celsius. And 210 days or 58% of the time, our temperatures are above 28, which is too hot. When we look at weather extremes, we have rain during the non-harvest time, rain during the harvest time, dew, hail, and wind. And we can document which of these extreme weather events, how often do they occur and for how long? And so as an example, there's only 9% of the hours in the total year where we have to worry about these extreme weather events. But 100% of the days have optimal temperatures part of the day, and 58% of the days are too hot. So I'm going to give you a quick introduction to our innovation center. This video was taken around two and a half years ago to show you some of the different trials we were doing back then so that I can explain to you the key learnings. So in this first house, what you can see is we have a big open space in the middle here, and then there is five rows of double gutters supported with net in between. So this is allowing us to have 10 gutters per 9.6 meter wide house and is providing a big open space in the middle for a tractor to go down for automatic spraying. So we're getting five sets of double gutters in this house here. When we go to this house here, single space gutters here, and there is eight gutters per house here, but this will require a manual backpack for spraying. We have the uh, NGS rotating gutter system here. And so there are two different densities in this house. 
And you can see that the gutters are just starting to rotate now. And what this is doing is giving us a higher density. But when we want to harvest or work on the plants, we still have a big opening. So the retractable roof is really allowing this technology to be exploited because in a conventional poly house or tunnel, you don't have enough light or control over humidity to have such a high density. And so by putting a retractable roof in combination with a rotating gutter system, we are taking advantage of the high light, the good humidity control, and the high density to get the maximum kilos uh, per, per hectare. And so this system here, there is either 125,000 plants per hectare, or we're up to 160,000 plants per hectare on the back. So this is gonna be a very interesting system to watch for growers who are really wanting to grow the maximum kilos on the smallest possible footprint. So what was the key learning from that trial? That is the first one, it's more important to focus on maximizing tons per hectare than maximizing plants. And so the rotating system allowed us to increase the number of plants per hectare. The problem is in hot, dry climates, you really wanna have substrates with a high buffer capacity for irrigation. And so the rotating system had a very small volume of soil media, which made it very difficult to keep the water content in the media high. So even though we had higher plants per hectare, the yield per plant dropped, and that drop caused a reduction in total yield in tons per hectare. And so we really came to the conclusion that we're better off to look at having stationary gutters with a higher, larger substrate volume like you see here. So I wanna identify some of the key learnings over the last five years. And this video is just a quick introduction. It's going to show you crops that were harvested April 19th this year, 2024. Would you like to produce this quality strawberry when it is 35 Celsius outside with a 15% relative humidity? Would you like to extend your winter production season from October until June using the least amount of water and electricity? It is April the 19th, 2024, and these strawberries were just harvested today inside our retractable cooling house at Irapuato, Mexico. Irapuato is located at 1700 meter elevation and at a latitude of 20 degrees north. These strawberry plants were transplanted in July and August of 2023, with the first harvest starting in October. These strawberry plants are grown outside in the morning, taking advantage of the high light and cooler temperatures. But around 9.30 a.m., when the leaf temperature exceeds 26 Celsius, the white cooling roof will be closed 92% to leave an 8% opening for ventilation. Three weeks ago, we installed a VFRA high pressure fog system to help cool and humidify without wetting the plants. Previously, we used a low pressure mist system, but it was unable to increase the relative humidity inside sufficiently without wetting the plants. So on April 19th at two o'clock in the afternoon, the air temperature outside is 35 Celsius, which is today's maximum temperature. The lowest temperature tonight will be 15 Celsius. The relative humidity right now outside is 15%. The sun radiation is very strong at this high elevation, making our black plate temperature outside on the weather station read 42.3 Celsius. When we close the cooling roof and the relative humidity inside drops below 30%, the VFRA high pressure fog system is activated with 25 second pulses at 30 second intervals. The combination of the cooling roof and fog reduces the air temperature from 35 down to 32 Celsius and increases the relative humidity from 15% to 51%. And most importantly, reduced the leaf temperature in the direct sunlight from 35 Celsius down to 28 Celsius. These changes dramatically reduce the transpiration rates and prevents excessive water stress 
prevents sunburn of the fruit, and virtually eliminates the attack of red spider. Around 5 p.m. when heat levels are lower outside, the cooling roof is then retracted to allow the plants to take advantage of the higher light levels and transpiration rates to increase fruit size and firmness. The roof stays retracted all night, helping to cool the fruit to increase bricks levels. Over the last five years at our strawberry demo house, we have proven that we can transplant during the hot summer months of July and August, start the first harvest in October and produce good quality fruit until mid or late June, produce 70 to 120 tons per hectare of number one quality fruit using good varieties and good quality young plants, use 80% fewer applications of agrochemicals and use 50% more organic sprays compared to tunnel production and produce using minimal electricity year round and only using water for cooling during the hot dry conditions. So this retractable flat roof house uses a porous roof covering and so it does not keep the rain off the plants. And we have found that the flat roof house is very effective unless you have extended periods of rain during the harvest season. So if you're growing in grow bags and you have rain during the first three months prior to the first flowers, the rain did not have a major issue. If you had rain during the harvest time and it was only one day, it did not have a major issue since the roof can be retracted to dry off the leaves and fruit. But if you did have rain lasting two to three days, that will result in pollination problems and reductions in fruit quality. So if you're looking at a location where rain is more frequent than a peaked roof house like an X-frame that has a gutter system will keep the plants dry. <clears throat> From all the trials we did, we can say we are quite confident to say around 83,000 plants per hectare is optimal. If you do 10 gutters per 9.6 meter wide house, and that is five sets of double gutters, eight plants per linear meter, we tried 10, but we actually had less tons per hectare with 10 plants than eight. And this gives you that optimal balance between maximizing tons per hectare, having a center row for mechanical spraying and good harvest efficiency. So when you have the cooling roof, you can transplant earlier because you can manage the heat during that July, August time period. And we were getting our first harvest here. We can see Albion on September the 10th, 2020, Murano, October 12th, 2021. So depending on the, the, the transplanting date and the climate, that will either move that first harvest forward or backwards. And here you can see fruit that's ready for harvest in May 19th from last year. So again, the goal here is to extend the season forwards and backwards to get those higher market prices away from open field and tunnel production. We've tried different substrates. So if you are in a location where you have more frequent rain, a more porous substrate works better. If you're in a location that does not have a lot of rain and it is a hot location, then having a higher water retention definitely helped improve the performance because you had a, bu a bigger buffer for retaining water in the substrate. One of the really interesting key learnings is that in a tunnel, you have a stationary roof, but you have an open sidewall. And insects tend to fly one to two meters above the ground. And so when you have an open end, the insects are free to enter. So you may spray today, but they're free to enter again tomorrow. In the retractable roof, it's opposite. We have the roof is opening and closing. We have roll up walls here that will open and close, but we just leave them closed all the time because we find we have less insect pressure if the walls are closed. Plus we have more uniform temperature and humidity conditions for the plants. When you have a retractable roof, you can help break that disease triangle. So if you are opening and closing a roof, you're going to allow the direct sunlight and the UV to hit the pathogen to, and kill the spore. 
And if you can dry off the leaves like you see here, then you have a reduced risk of foliar disease. And so when we compare disease and insect pressure in the retractable cooling house compared to a tunnel production growing uh, in the same general region, we can see that all of the major pest and disease issues were lower in the retractable roof. Because we had less pressure, we were able to reduce the number of spray applications by 50%. We had an 83% reduction in the use of agrochemicals and a 50% increase in organic sprays. When looking at the entire production system, you could choose to grow in pots on the ground or into a raised gutter system. So this is a lower cost system with the pots, but here you have better harvest efficiency and you can collect the irrigation water. Because we have around 95% number one quality, it lets you pack directly uh, the fruit into the clamshell so you don't have to bring it back to a packing house and handle it twice. So in summary, the harvest is from early October till June, 70 to 120 tons per hectare. Number one, 95% number one quality if rain is not an issue. 50% reduction in agrochemicals and water is used for cooling only when temperatures are greater than 30 degrees and relative humidity is less than 30%. Now, when you're trying to determine what sort of production system to use, you've got multiple options to consider, whether it's a tunnel, a poly house, a glass house, there's several different models of retractable roof houses. And each of those could be fitted with gutters or pots and different plant densities, different spray applications. And so what we believe is it's best to think of this as a strawberry plant factory. And so we want to analyze the product, production, productivity, profitability of all of these different plant factories and so we can make an informed decision. And so if you have comparative financial models, it will help you determine which production system will help you achieve your production and financial goals. So this is a, a, a sample or the start of a spreadsheet that will take you through the complete analysis. And at the end of the analysis, there's several key questions that need to be answered. Which plant factory is going to give you what profit per kilo? What's the return on investment on the different plant factories? What is the total capital and hectares of covered area required to produce the same total tons? And this is a really key question here because let's say you want to produce a million tons, you will need more hectares of tunnels, less hectares of retractable roofs. That, so you have to adjust the size of the farm so that they're all producing 1 million kilos. How many hectares can you build or kilos you produce for a given capital budget? So if you've got a target budget outlay, what's the output you can achieve? And if land is a constraint, how many tons and profit can be produced on a given size of land? So when you're ready to evaluate different production systems, just reach out to us at Cravo and we will take you through this financial model so that you can make informed decisions. Thank you for your attention and look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thanks again.